pursued to the edge of America, the brutal last stand of Chief Joseph and the Nez Percy tribe. I guess the colonizers then caught up with him. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The legend begins in the peaceful Wallowa Valley of Oregon in 1840 with the birth of Hinmatuyalatkek, known to the world as Chief Joseph. Joseph was named after his father, Joseph the Elder, who had adopted the English name upon his baptism in 1838. Joseph the Elder, a beacon of diplomacy, walked the tightrope between his tribe and the white settlers. His conversion to Christianity, a first among the Nez Perce, fostered a fragile truce with the encroaching settlers. With diplomacy and guile, he carved out a reservation for his tribe through a new treaty in 1855. But peace was a delicate thing, easily shattered. Gold lust brought white prospectors to Nez Perce lands, and most of the land promised to Joseph the Elder and his tribe was greedily reclaimed. Betrayed and infuriated, the Elder Chieftain cut ties with the settlers, casting aside his Bible and refusing to move his band from the Wallowa Valley or to sign the treaty that would legitimate the new reservation boundaries. Joseph the Elder passed away in 1871, and his son, also known as Chief Joseph, took over his leadership role. As tensions simmered and conflict loomed, Joseph, along with Chief's Looking Glass and White Bird, refused to bow to the government's resettlement program. When warriors from White Bird's faction split settler blood, Chief Joseph was put in a difficult situation. Anticipating a harsh retaliation, he made a daring decision. Retreat strategically, not in defeat, but to live and fight another day. Chief Joseph led 700 of his people, including only 200 warriors, for four grueling months on a staggering 1,400-mile trek towards Canada, outmaneuvering the pursuing Colonel John Gibbon and his soldiers, who outnumbered Joseph's warriors by a ratio of at least 10 to 1, and several times defeating them in actual combat. During the long retreat, he won the admiration of many whites through his humane treatment of prisoners, his concern for women, children, and the aged, and also because he purchased supplies from ranchers and storekeepers rather than stealing them. Colonel John Gibbon and his soldiers finally caught up with the Nez Perce tribe camped in a high meadow. The soldiers made a surprise attack, firing into the lodges and teepees. A fierce fight. I pronounce it Perce. Why the fuck I say Percy? Perce. Okay. Raged for the rest of the day. Chief Joseph estimated about 80 of his people were killed including many women and children. Joseph later said, quote, Nez Perce don't fight women and children. We could have killed many more, but we would have been ashamed. The Nez Perce... You see that? People of close ethics, honor, morals, principles, integrity, boundaries, virtue. On the other hand, the people that they was going against, no regard for none of that. They history don't consist of the worst. Bullies, but in a cowaristic way. It ain't straight up. It's waiting until they lethargic and weak and they sleep or whatever and attack the kids and women as well. That's crazy. They mind in a business. Doing a thing. And then you got some colonizing motherfuckers that come out of nowhere. They can't tell you where they come from. They can't point, pinpoint to a landmass that they originate from at all. But yet, do this. Have the nerve to come and knock on somebody's door that's minding their business and doing their own thing. That is sick to me, bro. <laughs> First, we're able to escape, but this battle changed things. After this, Joseph and his tribe didn't believe peace could be an option. The tribes pushed onward to Yellowstone, travoy poles bearing their injured. Their journey was marred by skirmishes and raids. Upon their arrival at Yellowstone National Park,
they encountered groups of tourists. Some young warriors, embittered and skeptical of the white men, seized and shot two tourists. Joseph, however, did his best to shield the others. He claimed that most were treated with kindness and respect. The task of maintaining order amongst the enraged and desperate warriors was growing harder and harder. Meanwhile, army troops were biding their time, awaiting the Nez Perce's departure from the- Just know, they never won anything. They never won anything. They ain't the first inventors that they tell you that yes, it's all stolen and rediscovered knowledge that's already been here before they even existed. Everything is, is a lie and stolen. Just know they ain't do that. You ain't coming out no carcass mountains and conquering nobody that's operating machinery with the ener with no energy propulsion system, operating with element 115, making hieroglyphs, obelisks, monuments, and pyramids. With spiritual technology, divinity, not your religious beliefs, giving the external source your your power. Like, just know everything they taught you was a lie. They ain't come out no carcass mountains and colonize shit. They had help from some people, whether it was the Yakub sub planter motherfuckers or it was reptilian, draconian, tall, white, Nordic, Pleialian, giant, Nephilim, whatever the fuck have you. Nonetheless, they got help. You mean to tell me people that come from terrible hygiene, that whole era, and then a dark age just eating your own kids? Can somehow conquer the world by themselves? No, they was created by something to begin with. All these scientists and independent researchers and study all across the world agreed that they haven't been around no longer than six or seven thousand years. And this planet, what, 15.5 billion years old? There's people that have been here since that time. So all that storage and data from the Akashic records and knowledge, pain, sorrows, or whatever, is still in they, 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 they DNA. What they are in a ribonucleic acid, your bloodline from your mother's side and your father's side, which make up of you today. Ain't no way you come within the midst of that six or seven thousand years and conquer people that was. Nah, it's something more to the story and it's going to be revealed. We're entering the age. Well, we're, we're already in the age of Aquarius, right? I know it go there and move back, then it go back and then it will eventually move forward. But we going to be here for thousands of years, right? Well, you're going to die, but. This crazy, bro. Oh, yet Joseph and his people outsmarted them. They traversed the Absaroka Range through areas thought to be insurmountable and evaded capture. Their sights were set on the Canadian border, their last sanctuary. The month was September 1877. The weather was changing. Many warriors had been lost, and their families were weary from the long journey. They made camp at the foot of Bear Paw Mountains in Montana a stone's throw from the Canadian border. But Colonel Nelson Miles and his troops caught up with them. The final battle, the battlefield, was drenched in blood and snow. Looking glass and two Hulhuzot fell, so did Joseph's brother, Olukut. Up to 200 Nez Perce escaped and crossed the Canadian border, but the majority were weary, injured, and spent. I could not bear to see my wounded men and women suffer any longer, Joseph admitted. We had lost enough already. Confronted with their grim fate, Joseph took it upon himself to meet Miles and how- How was life before these monkeys showed up? Before that six or seven, six or seven thousand years, how was life then? I want to know that part of the history. Do you think it was conflict no matter the era? Or was things more peaceful and people just had their terrains of landmass and traded with each other? Howard, on October 5th, 1877. He offered his rifle as a symbol of surrender. His speech of surrender, recorded by a soldier, became one of the most famous speeches in the history of the American West. Quote, it is cold, and we have no blankets. The little children are freezing to death. My people, some of them, have run away to the hills and have no blankets, no food. No one knows where they are, perhaps freezing to death. I want to have time to look for my children and see how many I can find. Maybe I shall find them among the dead. Hear me, my chiefs. I am tired. My heart is sick and sad. 
from where the sun now stands, I will fight no more, forever. These words encapsulate the heartbreak of their ordeal, the haunting sight of the missing, and the desperate search for Ken among the fallen. Chief Joseph and his band were sent at first to a barren reservation in Indian Territory, later Oklahoma. There, many sickened and died. In 1885, some of his tribe were permitted to return to the Pacific Northwest, but it was a hollow victory. The Wallowa Valley was forever out of reach, and his tribe had been decimated by war and disease. Chief Joseph's journey ended on September 21st, 1904. His body now rests in the Colville Indian Cemetery on the Colville Reservation in Washington State. But his spirit, his legacy, the tale of his valiant stand, and his extraordinary journey live on. I can see why he say he given up something to the sentiment of and he will never fight anymore. Well, energy can't be created nor destroyed. So people tend to think when you die, that's just the end of all biological function. And it's that feeling you feel, which is no feeling at zero years old because you're not conscious or aware of a program. It may have been conflict no matter the era. Um, some people even speculate or it's even books, uh, information and stories on that it's wars in the heavens. So heavens will be deemed, but out of this firmament, but I can see that as well. Some people tend to think once, once this over with, you completed it and you will join the, nah, cause how these people was even created. And then you go and you somehow win wars against people that's been here way longer than you. So you obviously was created by something of intelligence. And for these species to be of intelligence and to create something, that they pretty advanced. To create them, the species that's advanced that created them you would think the more knowledge you got that will wipe away evil you will know true and source and divinity and but no i say all this to say i feel like whatever they say even a story they got stories on i feel like it was it was war in the heavens some people tend to think conflict and bombs and nuclear fallout and guns and war and bloodshed is just all low vibrational stupid entity like activity i used to think that a little bit but when i expand my emotional intelligence and really look at it no because square one something created this species that somehow own everything right now and for them to create a species that's species that's this advanced they're not the most advanced but it's still advanced you would think they have hella failures and botched creations but for the most part they up straight so for you to create them you had to have all kind of neural pathways unlocked and intelligence at your hand so then the average that's not even a just know whoever created these species was a very intelligent person but he had his own his own plans because people tend to think again like conflict that's just what that's what humans they think that's a human like thing like no i see it. it's it's Drake like draconians that's a real thing they intelligent species but they they evil but very intelligent so i say that the, i know it i feel like it's conflict no matter the era you you just going to pick a side you're going to be with the good or you're going to be with the so-called bad and i feel like this shit ain't never over and uh, bouncing back on what i was saying earlier about the um Chief Joseph saying he don't want to fight anymore. He'll never fight again. Again, that's wrong, right? Energy can't be created nor destroyed. And it's no beginning because the beginning was always there. And it's not a, a end because the end was never there. So the, as the galaxy, the galaxy just expand and your energy that can't be created nor destroyed. So you just transfer, transfer or transform into a, 
inhabit another body of whatever kind and nonetheless is going to be conflict no matter the era it seems it's probably some kind of high vibration a playing field you can reach where it's nothing but tranquility and heaven like but in a sense with some kind of material like world solid not but nothing that's really solid they say because everything is vibrating at frequency and if you can match that frequency then for you will pass right through the object but yeah i feel like it's going to be conflict no matter the era and i feel like a species that's very intelligent even immortal like a more god-like and And they still use their intelligence for their own agendas. Some may even say evil. Some may even say evil or good don't exist. It's just. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. I thought it, they was going to. Um, it was something like didn't this Chief Joseph have like a book, some kind of old book of bible or something with some information in it and he was hunting him down for that that's what i heard i ain't hear that in the story at all but it's crazy dealing with everybody it's like these people has always been everybody problem it looked like but shit everything must come to an end right <laughs> um yeah that's crazy I, I thought that was going to be in this video, but it wasn't. So I'm like kind of upset about that. I'm like, where can I find it? It was it was something like pertaining to what the original Bibles or Apocrypha, uh, Book of Eden. I don't know. It was something, a, a scroll or something. Like I ain't hear them specify on that at all. Not even speak on it. But um, that's it. Oh, okay. Everything on to. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. I know a lot of people be like, let bygones be bygones. No, we're not. And when you have, when you have the knowledge, I know. You, you understand that the past, present, and future is all happen simultaneously. So it is like radio, FM, and whatever. And you just tune to your own different frequency. But if you can match that frequency, you can literally go to that, that place. And you can see this in real time happening to your ancestors. Take it a step further. Looking at it from their perspective. Ancestor right here. You can't see them, but I can. Like, would you want karma? So yeah, I want karma no matter what. Good karma as well as bad karma. And I believe in the eye for both of your eyes if you did it on purpose. If you was conscious and aware of your doings, you over the age of 25, your brain is fully developed. Well, it should be. So I believe in the eye for both of your eyes if you did it on purpose. Um, I understand. And it's through my blood and veins as well. So I understand that they will want vengeance and want this square and just justice no matter the era. And what goes hand in hand with that is they already proved the past, present, and future is all happening simultaneously. They had to prove it to you with logistics and ways and numbers. I already know it. It's innate. It's in my DNA. I know. I always knew that it's for you to time travel. You have to go forward or backwards. That in itself. And you ain't invent time travel. And then show us some imagery of what it looked like going through some portal and end up in poof. No, I always knew it existed. So... They're going to get their karma, though. One thing I do agree with in your books, and we all see. Look at this. Okay, let's say you're a billionaire. There's billionaires out there, and they some born billionaires, too, with diamond spoons. So it's like you reap the rewards of the spoils of war. As well, when this motherfucker turned upside down on his head, man's son will suffer of the father's doings. That isn't verbatim in the book but it's that's the sentiment and we see that in real time we've seen that in history we see that in the present we can project the future it's always been that so you will suffer of your father's doings um yeah it was people born into bondage born into slavery 1958 last human zoo they was born into it 
they don't know how and they just getting trampled on stepped on spit on treated on treated like trash and exploited and used and they wheels being imposed on so it's like yeah that's going to happen to yours the one that benefited off the spoils of war the ones that got the enjoy and benefit off the convenience of a group of people's ignorance you're going to get it it's a reason for the lowest fertility rates it's a reason why the x flares and the uv rays actually melt motherfuckers and inflame their brains and get them no melanoma skin cancer and shit it's a reason for all this and this all will be squared it's all debt at the end of the day that must be paid not with material and the money the real currency of money is what transfer of energy or abundance of energy so that can be something that's manifest in material and that's what aliens find very special about humans is that they take the time out to create things the energy so this is energy this is a someone spent their energy on this so just know everybody gonna get they just do and ain't none of you motherfuckers innocent Did I say the outro? I'm going to do it again. I bet. That's it for the video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I did do that. Send me what you want me to react to next and what you want me to talk about. It just has to make sense. Or I'm going to make sense of it and block you indefinitely. I'm sending you back to the load and screen with no materials. You're going to be a ghost and you're going to roam Earth forever in spectator mode. Where these people that should have went, that did this to the indigenous aboriginal people of the land. And you can't... You, identify what a west bubba fuck you come from but somehow you own everything your kids gonna get it i'm it's gonna come up y'all gonna get it bro i swear everything gonna get squared <sighs> i'll see y'all in the next one man i'm out